Hi there. Today we've got an unusual job, which is some parts off of a 1951 Field Marshal tractor. So it's now over 70 years old and the parts are absolutely fantastic and the machine itself is uh, an absolutely brilliant looking machine and it's even started by using a shotgun cartridge, obviously with no shot in it, to start the engine. So an amazing bit of machinery, an amazing bit of British history. So here are the parts. If you like what we do, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and if you hit the notification bell, you'll be informed when we release a new video. They're not in bad condition for parts that are over 70 years old. Not done too bad at all, but obviously they're due for a refurbish. They're a fair bit rusty, but thankfully they're made a nice thick material, so we shouldn't have any problems in reconditioning and re-chroming these, so they look beautiful again. The first thing we do is photograph the items so that we've got a record of what they are. We list them all out and price them and send that to the customer. And then all of that information gets printed out and it's sealed in a plastic bag so that it doesn't get destroyed and it goes around the workshop with the job. The first job that we have to do is strip all the old rust, paint, all that sort of stuff so we can get back to the bare metal and start restoring these parts. What we're doing here is we're wiring them up onto copper wires so that we can strip the old plating off. And the way how we do that is we reverse the process so instead of the workpiece being the cathode the workpiece is the anode and we basically plate the old plating off. As these are a bit greasy, they're going in some thinners to take the grease off. After that, they're going into the stripper tank. This is about two thirds sulfuric acid with a couple of other bits in it. And this is where we're gonna pass the electric current through the opposite way to plating. After it's been in there for long enough, it comes out, but it's still not taking the rust off, as you can see. So here it's going in some hydrochloric acid where the rust is going to be removed and there it is, the rust scot. The next job is into the polishing shop so that we can get these polished up. Now we're into the polishing shop this is where most of the hard work is going to be carried out on this job. Before we can think about applying any plating whatsoever, we're going to have to polish these up to a near mirror finish. The first polishing operation is where we remove all of the old corrosion marks 
So this is probably about an 80 or a 120 grit, depending on how bad these marks are. Now, as you can see from this slow motion bit, you can't remove any marks without removing some metal and causing a lot of sparks. It's just a case of methodically working round all of the areas evenly so that you don't take the shape out of the item that you're working on. There you can see using the edge of the belt, working into awkward areas. Now we're changing to a finer 240 grit belt now. Now as we've already removed all of the original corrosion marks, what we're doing now is we are just removing all the marks that we put in with that previous rough belt. It's just a case of working through all the parts again with this finer grade. Now we're changing to a different type of abrasive tool. This is a soft mop that's been dressed up with a 320 abrasive. 
Now this is more forgiving and it'll allow you to get into some of the more awkward areas but it's also finer than the belt that we've just been using. So we're going to be able to go over with this but also we can work that into some of the more difficult to get to corners because it's more flexible than an abrasive belt. So as before, it's a case of making sure that you methodically work all the way through, making sure that you've removed all of the marks that you left in from the previous polishing operation. Let's speed this up a bit. Now the last tool going on is a sizal brush. Now with this brush and with the polishing compound that we put on it, we're going to be able to polish the, the last of those abrasive marks out and leave it at a near mirror finish. You can't tell from the video, but you have to apply quite a lot of weight to the item doing this, so you're pushing quite hard against the machine. From this last polishing operation you can see that the part is really starting to shine. Just need to give it a wipe over to remove any polishing compo, that way we can check that it's polished to the right standard. Let's get through the last ones quickly. Now that these have all been polished, they're ready for the next stage. Now we're in the plating shop where this is going to get a coat of nickel and chrome. Before we can do that, the first thing we've got to do in here is we've got to wire it all up again on copper wire so that we can pass an electric current through it. It's called electroplating for a reason, so we need to be able to pass an electric current through it.
now that it's wired up it's going to be going up onto the plant and into our hot soap cleaner. This is just a hot soapy cleaner. In plating, cleanliness is paramount so everything's going to get wiped down just to make sure that there's no polishing composition, grease, dirt or anything stuck to it because that would cause a fault in the plated surface. So we need to make sure that they're perfectly clean before that we start plating them. Now they're going to go into our electric cleaner. Now what this does is with one throw of the Frankenstein switch we will pass a current through it. You can see it fizzing away there and this blasts the oxide layer off the surface of the metal because even within a few minutes of it being polished anything metal wants to start oxidising. Now we're rinsing off the cleaning solution. This one that it's going in now is a dilute sulfuric acid, it's just like vinegar, the strength of it. So swilled with water again. And now it's into the nickel tank. This is where it will get the most of its plate in and it's the nickel layer that gives it its lovely shine, good looks and weather protection. So all the all the other parts are going through the same process clean, rinse, acid, rinse and into the nickel. Once the power's set it's time to leave it cooking for a while. This is about an hour later when they're ready to come out. We've got to rinse the nickel solution off them and then it's straight over onto the chrome. Electricity on again. And there you can see it fizzing away again. Just a few minutes later it's coming out of the chrome tank and then this is being rinsed off. This neutralizes the chrome solution in this tank. It's so a rinse in water. And those three parts are now finished as they've been chromed, just being left for the water to dry. But all the other parts have got to go through the same process. So lots of rinsing, chrome on. back out the chrome when they're done. Before we can wipe them down and inspect them we've got to unwire them all. So this is what we're doing here.
If you like what we do, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and if you hit the notification bell, you'll be informed when we release a new video. Now they're all off the wires, we can run a cloth over them and wipe any water and finger marks off and that way we can make sure there's no defects. There's some items that are going to need a little bit of extra work. Where it's grey on the end there's too much chrome so what we're going to do is we're going to go back in the polishing shop and we're just going to polish these ends to remove the chrome burn and then they'll be completely finished. The chrome burn is now removed and done. Now that these parts have gone through the whole restoration process, it's time to take a proper look at the results that we've been able to achieve. And now let's see what they look like at the beginning so you can compare. If you like our videos, remember to like and subscribe to our channel, that way you won't miss any new videos when we bring them out.